fact that the Ethiopian World Federation at this present time is in Rastafari jurisdiction. In other words, under Rastafari, you could say under Rastafari guard. It's being kept under Rastafari watch. It's good because the real role of Rastafari, and I've often said this in many of the videos, and if you watch some of the other lectures and teachings, I've said that Rastafari is the elect. You'll say in this prophetic time, this time of revelation, in this present dispensation that we're living, Rastafari is the very elect of the true and living God. And this is why when the scripture says that um, when judgment, there must be a judgment, but judgment must first be at the house of God. You understand the words, judgment must first come amongst us because there's more that's required of, amongst us. To whom more is given, more is required. So the fact that Rastafari has such a role and responsibility, and many of the Rastafari brothers and sisters here and there knows this is true. You know what I'm saying? However, we have, I would say collectively, have not gotten the, the workings together, kept our unity, our faith tight around the principles of his majesty so there's a negative or dysfunctional image and, and, and a lack of responsibility, accounting and responsibility that, that um, creates a barrier to our other black peoples out there who are also part of that greater diaspora, who are part of the greater diaspora or the diaspora, Yovis, and therefore it kind of betrays faith, in other words, with the original architects, and namely Edamawi Haile Selassie, His Imperial Majesty Haile Selassie I, and with Dr. Malaku Emanuel Bayan. And this is the reason why we put forth the video, just to make this statement clear and continue to make this statement. And if there's others of you that knows this is true, and one particular, I think, um, brother or one's um, the zealot, <laughs> I smile because um, one of the, you know, I think Simeon or Simon, one of the disciples, he was called, uh, I think, Zelotes, because they were zealots. They were different groups of Israelites, like we have different groups of black people today. For example, we want to make a statement about the Pan-Africanists. You know, the whole Pan, that Rastafari is not primarily Pan-African. Rastafari is primarily Ethiocentric. See, see, we have to over that right there. In other words, it's like Rastafari is focused mainly on Ethiopia and, and securing, you understand, our divine heritage. You understand? Know and also in disseminating the true gospel of our black Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshiach. So now that also can bring us once again to some of the, the primary things that we've been speaking on, such as the lack of the true teachings of His Majesty, the, the lack of knowledge of it, much less the lack of application of these principles within the the, the family within the community of Rastafari. And now there's, there's more to this, as, as you might already anticipate. There's much more to this, but these are some of the ideas from some of the reasonings that we have been having with some of our, our um, co-workers and co-laborers and other brothers and sisters who've been showing us what's going on on the horizon concerning Rastafari and, and some of the challenges that we are able to meet in this present time. So presently, yes, the Ethiopian World Federation is under Rastafari jurisdiction, but we're saying that it needs to open up, you understand, to the greater we, the black people, especially those um, righteous brothers and sisters. I'm speaking about our Christian black brothers and sisters, our Hebrews, Israelite brothers and sisters out there, um, the Mohammedans, that's, that's a curious point right there, because as you probably already know, we are having certain serious um, 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 tribulation. I'm talking about Africans at home and abroad, but mainly on the continent, in the horn of Africa, home and abroad in greater Africa, on, continentally speaking, continental Ethiopia, in other words, um, with this whole Mohammedan thing. And then those of us who know our, 
our true story, we know that the Mohammedan, the Arabs, and the slave trade, this there is still a judgment on those particular things. So seeing what's going on in Nigeria and Mali and the Horn of Africa and even in Sudan with the Christian Nubian, so forth and so on, and then in the greater picture of it, we have to really look at that a little more circumspectly and not just rush to it because people so-called are black, because you may be my color, but not I and I kind. In fact, this kind of goes along with the question of the Federation of whether there can be or should be a Muslim chaplain for a local. And I would say unless that local is a faithful Ethiopian Muslim local, that no, that should not be so because it conflicts primarily with the core of our divine heritage. And that's another discussion that we're willing to have and take up with anyone who would like to know more about that particular point. But this is pointing to our divine heritage as Judeo-Christian. Our divine heritage is of that particular foundation. So, yes, the Ethiopian World Federation right now is under Rastafari. Um, I, I wish I could say command and control, but um, there's, there's, there is... Uh, <sighs> You know, there are challenges for us, but as more of us get involved and get informed, these challenges become easier to overcome, easier to reconcile if possible or resolve, or bring a solution to them. So we're going to touch on this subject and the next subject related to it in the next vid. Just want to kind of answer a couple of the basic questions. So Ethiopian World Federation right now at this present time is mainly the Rastafari people who are the elect, the elect. When we read in the, the scripture concerning the elect, those with the new name. So because we have a new name as Rastafari, it doesn't mean that the that the truth, the way, the truth and the life has changed. So it it, it has not changed from a Judeo Christian foundation. It has not changed from being our divine heritage as a Judeo-Christian polity, as Ethiopian Hebrews at home and abroad. So we, as the Hebrew or black Rastafari, and that's the next thing we want to touch on concerning the Gentiles and concerning some of the other nations, because there is still this, it seems to be a confusion about how do we, do we, in, accept European white rosters or even Asian rosters or other people who are not so-called, quote, black, and then what is the definition of black, so forth and so on. So that's another question that needs to be answered. And it's very interesting because if we were paying attention to the teachings of His Majesty, namely the B-I-B-L-E, those questions concerning the Gentiles are very succinctly, directly, and operatively answered within the good news known as the gospel. And in a vid called The I Teachings of His Majesty, um, Jew and Gentile or Black and White, Rastafari, we're going to seek to address that from the scriptures based on the glory of His Majesty, based on the B-I-B-L-E, the basic instructions before liberating Ethiopia. So stay tuned. Shalom.